You have six hours and zero minutes of remaining drive time. In the name of, of my ancestors, peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of what I call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the gatekeeper, the host of this program, known here on social media. Wherever you may find me, I am the Mighty One, Angel Snub Number Seven. And of course, I am also your soul brother, Number One. Before I get into the main topic, which which shouldn't take that long, I just wanted to, as you know, I really don't speak about celebrities. I don't talk about the stars, you know, these famous folks or whatever. I really don't talk about entertainment type things. But I am wondering, I just want to put this, let this fly in front of you for just a second. Because I'm noticing all the videos. And I want to make very. I'm like Richard Nixon. I want to make perfectly clear. I want to make perfectly, perfectly clear. I am not attempting to. Defend Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey has lawyers. Oprah Winfrey has. Uh, uh, access. To the greatest minds you want to get your hands on. She's a big shot media person. She does not. Does not need my help at all. To defend her actions. I have always. Uh, admired Oprah Winfrey. Regardless to her opinion. Or, or whatever the things that she have done. I always liked Oprah because she was a, a a sister. I didn't even notice she was fat. I did not care. I saw an articulate woman, very intelligent sounding woman, and I liked that in in the sisters. And I always liked Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey come from the same type of place I come from, very poverty stricken. I think she also came from Mississippi also, like myself. It was a lot of things about Oprah Winfrey that I liked. Some of the things she do, her opinions, of course, as you know, just being on this platform, you know, I wouldn't agree with much of the things that Oprah Winfrey would say or represent and her skinning and grinning as powerful as she's supposed to be. See, that's another thing. These uh, soul brothers and sisters like Oprah Winfrey and P. Diddy and Jay-Z, Beyonce and all, our, all these folks with all this money. And they still have to skin and grin in front of pink people. I, I don't understand that. I mean, you don't have to. You got all this money. You're supposed to have all this power. And you still got to watch what you say. You got to skin and grin. I, I don't get it. That tells me a lot about us. Whether we have some power or not, something about pink people, we got to bow down to. We got to. We got to make sure we don't hurt their little feelings. I don't understand that. Of course, the pro-black, black conscious community would say that's a slave mentality. And they ain't no damn better. They only go so far. They know what line not to cross. Because these pink folks, they'll come out and they'll give you a, a, a whooping. <laughs> and they, they, not, they don't want none of that. So, 
I just noticed all these videos, well, maybe not a lot, but I started, started to notice. Hey, what's up there, Zia? I started to notice these videos about Oprah Winfrey and she's breaking up the black family because I think she's making a documentary or she's doing some type of news thing uh, on uh, Russell Simmons. And of course, you know, they got on Oprah Winfrey's case about Michael Jackson. Now, any of you who know and you follow my page, y'all know I got a thing. You know, Michael is, is, is the brother. When I was a inspiring entertainer, if it was not for Michael Jackson, I would, would care less about songwriting and singing and dancing and all that type of stuff. I, I did not. That was not my thing. It was Michael Jackson. It was, it was Michael Jackson that influenced me and, and Prince. And Sharday. Because there was something about Sade that I liked. Any message but now. Arrived. So. As you know. Michael Jackson was accused of child molestation. Child abuse. Pedophilia. Then we have Bill Cosby. Who confessed. Who confessed. To giving women drugs. So that he could rape them. He confessed. Then you have R. Kelly, and some of y'all seen that, that, that tape. Some of you will say, that's R. Kelly, that's urinating on this young girl. Then you have Russell Simmons, who fled the country. He's not in the country, accused of the same type of thing, rape of women. And so there's an outrage by these blackity black pro black cautious type folks. Oprah Winfrey is attacking the black man, but she's giving Harvey Weinstein a pass. You know, this is the way I look at it. Oprah Winfrey is a grown woman. She can do whatever the hell she want to do. If she want to rep if she want to support the white man, 1,000% more power to you. What the hell are you going to get upset? Do, do Oprah Winfrey run around here and make videos complaining about what you do? So what the hell you care about? The reason why Oprah Winfrey don't give a damn about what you think because you have no power to affect anything that she does. You mean nothing to Oprah. The reason why you talk about Oprah for some views and to spread your uh, distorted, wacky ass propaganda, your, your uh, thinking. That's why you use her name to clout chase. That's what you do. That's what it's all about. Because if I put these same people name in my videos, they're going to say, oh, you a clout chaser. You talk about Farrakhan, you clout clout chasing, you talk about Tariq Nasheed and whoever, if I put them in the title of my videos, it's clout chasing, but you can put Oprah in your videos and it's alright. Y'all, do you see, see how hypocritical and fake these folks are? You're not saying nothing good about Oprah. You want to expose her for being the mammy, the mammy that she is or whatever. And guess what? Oprah don't give a damn about you. She could care less. Y'all can kick rocks. Because when your poor ass, no state having controlling ass, no town controlling ass, no neighborhood controlling ass, no nothing ass, except the damn YouTube channel, that's all the hell you got. When you take your ass to sleep, Oprah don't get, it ain't gonna bother her in the least. You can make one billion videos, it's not gonna, she ain't gonna give a damn. But the point that I want to make on this, like I say, I don't, I don't need to, I don't need to defend Oprah Winfrey. She has lots of resources, lots of money, but my thing is, she's destroying the black family. How the hell is Oprah Winfrey destroying the black family? I love Michael Jackson. 
I love Michael Jackson. But I don't know Michael Jackson. He was accused of some of something very horrible. Nothing surprised me. I'm not going to open my mouth because I wasn't there. I'm not going to so I'm not I'm not going to get into that argument because I don't know Michael Jackson. None of you do. Personally, I don't think Michael Jackson would do something like that, but you never know. There are many. I was locked up with some for all oh, man. I was just talking to my beautiful sister Nova last night and I was telling her about this guy named John on the outside Johnny Johnson every day he was writing poetry he was drawing flowers every day that's what Johnny Johnson was doing as soon as they let that guy go he tried to rape a six-year-old little girl and I guess the little girl put up a fight and then he took a concrete block and bashed her in the head. On the outside looking in, you might not think that's possible because he was a quiet guy, draw flowers all day, quoting poetry and talk about, and talk about I love my grandma. I want to see my grandma. In less than a month after they released this guy, he killed a six-year-old child, tried to rape her. So I don't know, I don't know Michael Jackson like that. Bill Cosby for com confess. R. Kelly looked guilty. And chances are he's gonna mess around and go to jail. And then you have Russell Simmons who fled the country, and these pro-black folks are using these men accused by other black folks of these heinous behaviors and allegations so you choose them because they're a celebrity oh you believe you support Bill Cosby because he's a celebrity and Michael Jackson and R. Kelly and Russell Simmons because they're celebrities and you don't give a damn about the black victims the soul sisters or the soul children that said this man done this to me. Cloud chasing. How the hell is Oprah Winfrey, because she's talking about these particular black men, accused of these heinous behaviors, how the hell is she destroying the black family when these men, they are the ones that need to be exposed. They the ones that need to be, hey, what's up, bruh? They are the ones in the position of destroying the black family more than Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey was giving away damn cars and furniture and houses. How the hell is she breaking up the black family? Because of the exposure of Oprah Winfrey, a lot of brothers and sisters got a lot of something going on. These men are accused of molesting our children, raping our women, and some others. And you want to give them a pass because they are celebrity. Now, why don't you choose some other men with a better background? Here, you got some men that look guilty as hell of something very, very nasty, which if they did this, in Arabia some damn where they get their head chopped off. They don't play that. But then too, <laughs> I don't know, they very self-righteous. I don't know where they get off at killing folks like that when the whole country is, is corrupt, but that's another, that's another talk. I'm just curious, why are you choosing these men with their backgrounds and what they are accused of doing why are they the ones, oh, they break, breaking up the black family. Oprah Winfrey is, rather, breaking up the black family. I don't get that. Why are, why are you choosing these men accused of such heinous allegations? It's a possibility they, they could be innocent. Out of all the people in the world, you know I have to stand with justice. Because I know that you can get, I know people will lie on you. 
I know that you can go to jail, you can go to prison on false charges and allegations. So, my thing is, out of all the people in the world, why are these the examples of manhood that you got to protect and defend? Oprah's not messing with somebody uh, like, what's his name, Byron Allen, he's married to a white woman or whatever. She's not messing with him, he's hiring people, giving people jobs, and he's doing things, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, did, um, Oprah Winfrey's not messing trying to expose Denzel Washington or, or Michael Jordan or nobody like that or Eddie Murphy. They don't have these kind of charges and allegations against them. They're not Russell Simmons. As soon as he thought that charges might be brought against him, his ass got on a plane and now he's in another country. He's not... She's not a... a, a you know, I, 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 this is just something, I don't know, maybe it's just something wrong with me. I just don't get it. You would think that these pro-blackly black folks would pick a better example. Now, if Oprah really was attacking black men, you know, like Will Smith or somebody, I can understand. She's not even attacking Farrakhan. Y'all love Farrakhan. She don't, she don't even attack Farrakhan. She's putting out, she's investigating the criminal activities or alleged criminal activities of these black men. You was not there. You don't even know. You have no idea. So it's all up in the air. And then, and then y'all look so stupid when you find out all of it is true. Y'all look really, really stupid. I remember, that's why I don't even get involved in stuff like that no more. Some of you probably remember Tawana Brawley. The Tawana Brawley case. In the uh, late 80s, I believe. Tawana Brawley accused the district attorney of New York of, uh, I think, raping her and throwing feces on her and urinating on her. It was an uproar. Oh, our women. These white men doing this to our women. When it was all said and done, when the smoke cleared, the evidence came out, and Firecon and Al Sharpton and all them Negroes that jumped on that on board that train, if you notice, they don't talk about the Tawana Brawley case at all. They want to make sure you keep quiet on that. I should make a video talking about it. Al Sharpton running his mouth and Farrakhan was there too. Tawana Brawley was even in a, a public enemy video. Fight the power. Then it all turned out when it was all said and done. The evidence showed she was a liar. Her and some, and her, and some other people was trying to get revenge on that district attorney for something he did to one of their family members or something like that. It was all a lie. See what happened when you get a, and now they all feel stupid. And I felt stupid. Don't do that to our black women. So why are you going to jump on the, on, the, on the train about something that you don't even know? Why are you going to get on Oprah Winfrey's case about something you really don't even know. Then it turned out that Russell Simmons did do what he done. And R. Kelly is guilty. And the thing about it is, again, you don't care nothing about the black accusers, the soul brothers and sisters and children that say, this man did this to me. Oh, you just ignore them. Their word don't mean nothing. Just like y'all suckers, when our people tell you that my grandmother and my grandfather, my people told me I'm a Native American. We Native. You make mockery of them. What reason do these people, grandmother and grandfathers, why, what reason do they have to lie 
to their offspring, their children. What is the reason? you rather believe the white man. The white man told you was an African. Even the African didn't tell you was an African. White folks told you that. And then you do your research and find these little bits, bitty pieces of paper. Not millions, because you said millions of Africans was brought over here. You only show us a few pieces of paper that all these Africans, the, by the millions, came over here. You should have millions of pieces of paper or records to show this, but you don't. Just a little handful of stuff. You claim millions. So I, I'm just, that bothers me. That you would use these men for the example that you would come all out and attack this woman over people that you don't know that could actually be guilty. So who gives a damn? And above all, the reason why you are so interested in what Oprah doing, cause y'all ain't doing a damn thing. You don't have a you don't have a neighborhood to control. You don't have a city to control or a town. And you laugh talking about having a nation to control, a state. So you don't have nothing else to do anyway. So waste your time wondering about what Oprah going to do. But if you control a state and that state did not like what Oprah do or Will Smith or any of these other people, they'll listen to you then. You know why? Because now you got some power. Now you got influence. Now you can tell Oprah Winfrey, well, Oprah, that's the way you feel. We, this state, we boycotting everything that you do. There will be no own television in Mississippi. There will be no reruns of the Oprah Winfrey show in Mississippi. Anything affiliated with you, Oprah, you will not find that in Mississippi. Now Oprah might listen to you. But right now, you don't have a pot to piss in. Oprah don't give a damn anyway about what you're talking about. She going to do what Oprah do. Now, I could be off base. Jot in the comments and let me know. I could be off, whatever. But what Oprah do, as far as I'm concerned, don't mean nothing to me. I could care less. Bill Cosby got money. Michael Jackson got money. R. Kelly had money. Russell Simmons, they don't need your, your help to defend them. They don't give a damn about none of you. Go to jail and then ask Russell Simmons to send you some money. And he can still do it from another country. Oprah, uh, Russell Simmons ain't going to send you a, a dime. You going all out your way. What it is, like I say... You're nothing but clout chasers trying to get these people attention. And they, Oprah don't give a damn about none of y'all. The black conscious community, blackly black. She do not give a damn about, as long as she got her white folks with her, she do not give a damn about you Negroes. Because you, the white folks got the money, they got the power, you don't have a pot to piss in. And, and clearly you don't understand that. These people don't care nothing about you. Africa don't give a damn about you. You have nothing to offer. And you don't want to get nothing. You want to sit around here and talk about a, a million dollar business, a rinky dink African school. And these people talking about billions and trillions of dollars and y'all thinking really, really small. Nobody care nothing about what you talking about. On that note, let me go ahead and get into what I really want to talk about take a few minutes like I said I could be off base that bothers me so I just had to share that with you because it, it just kept bothering me that these folks go all out the way and these these men and Bill Cosby even confess they break Oprah is breaking up the, the family are you serious get the hell out really 
How about them drug dealers in your neighborhood? Huh? Them liquor stores in your neighborhood. You talk about something breaking up the black family. How about the how about the your, your children not getting a proper education in the public school system? Why don't y'all deal with that? That's too much damn work. It's easy to go on a video and talk about Oprah. That's easy to do. I dare you to go out in the street and mess with the drug dealers. I dare you to. They break up. Their activity break up the black family more than Oprah would ever do. And then they'll shoot you in a drive-by trying to get somebody else. And your grandma dead. Wow. That activity really broke up your family. Now you don't have your grandma. Really. I don't understand this way of thinking. Maybe... Maybe I'm off somewhere. Maybe. I don't know. Teach me. I'm open. Unlike, unlike the pro-blackity black folks, I'm open. Teach me. Show me where I'm going. I'm off base with this. Because I see a whole lot of things that's affecting the so-called black family than what Oprah Winfrey doing. The fact that the black family don't have a nation the fact that the black family don't have a town, a neighborhood, a place where they can feel safe, that, that affects the black family more so than anything Oprah Winfrey is doing. They have no safe haven. They have no place to go to feel safe. It's easy to run your mouth and talk. Look. How many of you are familiar with a uh, an emergency room? Of course, if you get a little sick, your stomach hurt or whatever, you can go there for a little tiny thing, go to the emergency room. But really what an emergency room really is for is for people who suffer trauma. Been in a car accident, been shot, serious injury they bring you in to the emergency room and you will hear the word this this victim suffered a uh, certain you know trauma it's about trauma they've been hurt we got to stop the bleeding they might not make it so and so is in critical condition suffer trauma that's physical trauma have you ever now see the thing about trauma is that you can heal I'm talking about physical trauma you can heal but that don't mean you're going to be alright some people get shot they are in car accidents, they suffer trauma, and they heal and go back to doing whatever they was doing before the car accident or getting shot. They do not never forget they was in a car accident. I was in a car accident back in the uh, early 80s. And even to this day, when I hear car wheels squeaking, squealing, I jump. It bothers me because that was the uh, last sound that I heard before those vehicles smashed into one another. And luckily, I didn't really get I didn't really get hurt. But there are those who have gotten hurt. The thing about an injury, the thing about suffering trauma physical physical trauma is that you carry a scar now I want y'all to keep it with me you carry a scar I know guys who have been shot and they lift up their shirt or show on their arm wherever they was hit and they said this is where the bullet hit me 
they they have healed, but they still carry the scar. There are those who suffer trauma, who don't quite recover, and you are laying in the room after being shot, and the doctor has to come to tell you bad news. Well, you're going to live, and you smile, and your family hug you, wow, you're going to make it. I have something else to tell you. You're paralyzed from the waist down. You're, you're never going to walk again. And then all that smiling and joy fades into sorrow because now you just learn that you're never going to walk again. It's not guaranteed. There's some people who are temporarily paralyzed after gunshot wounds or being in a car accident, then there are those who become paraplegic and they are, you know, disabled for the rest of their life. Disabled for the rest of their life. Why am I bringing all this up? I'm bringing all this up because I wanted to respond to a, to a, a comment that someone made to me on another video that don't belong to me speaking on this on this subject really and they're gonna come to me all pompous and self-righteous because I told you before I told you the story about I was bullied as a child and that bullying has affected me even as an adult so I said the same thing in a comment and this bastard had the nerve to come to me talk about uh, you need to get over it. You need to control yourself. Be open and honest. Get some therapy. You can get over that. So of course I got to go off. Do you know what that is? I just described to you what physical trauma is. And the same thing can be found in mental trauma. Nobody with your self-righteous ass, nobody is in a position to judge somebody when they've been through trauma. When a woman is raped, when a woman is violated, when you have a child that don't know nothing about sex and you got a grown man, Taking his penis, trying to put his penis down the anus of a child. That's traumatic. That's an extreme violation. How dare you have the nerve to go to a, a person who has experienced stuff like that. You have no idea. Most people who are self-righteous and judge people, they've never been through that themselves. Can you imagine being in jail? And when you go to jail, you Mr. Macho, you love women, you got five and six children or whatever, and you bad, you, you know, you a boxer. And then you going down the hall and six, seven, eight men just as big as you are grab you, throw you in the bathroom, pull your pants down, there are a lot of men who have been raped by men and you, they're not going to tell you about it. The humiliation, the violation, the trauma of the situation. Men get raped contrary to popular belief. Men get raped by men and men get raped by women. Contrary to popular belief. There was a woman that tried to rape me one, one time. The only reason why she was not successful trying to rape me was because I was stronger than her. That's the only reason. 
Men can get raped too. Men can suffer that type of trauma. How dare you, how dare anybody go to a person and tell them how they should feel, how they should deal with their trauma, just like the, just like the physical trauma. What kind of fool would you look like going into an emergency room and tell somebody who just got shot, oh, that's just a few bullets, get over it. That's a, you sound stu that sounds stupid, don't you? Have you ever been, have you ever been robbed at gunpoint? And somebody put a gun to your head? Give me your money or your life? That's trauma. You hear stories and a lot of people, when they are in situations like that, they're not going to tell you the whole story. You will actually defecate and you will actually urinate on yourself when somebody put a gun to your head. And like King Noble said, that's a fact. It's trauma. Hey, what's up there, Legend? Hey, you know who I'm talking about, Legend. You was on that post with me. This nutcase talking about uh, get over it. Get over uh, whatever it is that affect you. These things you will never get over. These are traumatic things that you will carry the rest of your life. There are women who are married and they are trying to have families after they've been raped. But then there are women who now hate men because they was raped. I cannot blame her. Oh, she needs to get over it. I'm not going to tell that woman to get over it. That's a devastating activity. Hey, what's up there, uh, Brother Gary? That's devastating. How dare you have the nerve? You will not go in a hospital and tell somebody who was in a car accident, oh, you just need to get over it. Heal up. Everybody that suffered trauma, we was just we was just talking about physical trauma. You will heal up, but you carry the scar. So you have women, they continue to try to live their lives, but that scar of being raped, that scar of being molested as a child, all that's People still carry that with them. It just don't go away. And you cannot ask them. You cannot make mockery of them and try to tell them, oh, just get over it. Get that, 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 that's, that's, that, that didn't, you, you can get over that. It didn't happen to you. Some people don't get over trauma. Some people die in the emergency room. Some people never get over it. I'm never going to tell. See, I can talk because I used to be like that. I used to be like judging folks all the time because of what I can do. I don't see why they act that way, uh, uh, you know. Because I'm using myself as a, an example. You don't know nothing until you walk in another person's shoes. Have you been raped? No. Was you robbed? Robbed? Was you robbed at gunpoint? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I don't know whether you male or female, legend, but yeah. You still have flashbacks, of course. That's traumatic. It's traumatic having a gun to your head if you was robbed at gunpoint. Because you know if that trigger was pulled, somebody raping you. Okay. Thank you, legend. Yes, sir. Somebody raping you, pulling your, 
tearing your clothes off, forcing you to do something you don't want to do. So you have those who suffer physical trauma. And like I said, the doctor tell you where well, you're going to live. But you'll never walk again. So we have people, we got people, and that's what's wrong with the soldiers. American soldiers commit suicide every day because of the trauma they experience in war. Can't get over it. They're giving folks these psycho medications that don't really help. They just keep you uh, tranquilized. This is a traumatic experience. And then when wicked people, nasty people approach you, oh, you're going to get it because this person already been traumatized. They already just barely hanging on. And here come an idiot with their big mouth. Oh, you're going to get it. And that person that has been traumatized might mess around and kill you with your silly self. You cannot tell nobody to just get over it. And so we have Caucasian people. And they tell us as the children of slaves. Oh, that was a long time ago. Get over it. How dare you? See, see, they have the same mindset. Because it's not them. George Bush said Saddam Hussein made a threat against his daddy. Couldn't let it go. He went and sought revenge. Started a whole big war to try to get revenge because for his daddy. Colonel Gaddafi was accused of uh, the bombing of Pan, Pan Am, whatever that damn airplane was. They didn't stop messing with Colonel Gaddafi until they killed him. They didn't stop messing with Saddam Hussein until they killed him. They did not stop messing with Dr. King until they killed him. But then, when you show them the evil and the wrong they done, oh, why don't you just get over it? Why don't you take some pills? Why don't, why don't you go to therapy? Here we are, as a people, and there's, there's science that backs it up. And I'll leave y'all to do that. That's Because I don't do that. I heard about it. I heard that there's science that backs up that the trauma that the mother and the father, especially the mother that suffers, she passes that down to her children. There's a word for it. I forgot what it, what it, what it is. Somebody was telling me about it not too long ago. So if that's true, we are a people who have been traumatized for hundreds of years. This trauma passed down from generation to generation. What did we see in our trauma? We saw our little black babies getting fed to alligators. What did we see in this trauma? Your mother, your sister, your cousins was raped. Your husband, his penis cut off. He was tarred and feathered and lynched. That's the type of trauma that we suffer for hundreds of years. Hey, boy, when I walk, you walk on the other side of the street. This is the kind of thing that we did, had to deal with for hundreds of years. And you wonder why the so-called Negro soul brothers and sisters, you wonder why we should have a problem because we've been traumatized for hundreds of years. And a Bible ain't did a damn thing to help us. And a Quran ain't did a damn thing to help us. Matter of fact, probably made the situation worse. That's what it done. And all this pro blacky black stuff made the situation worse. Because we want to run around here as a people, as a group of people. We're not, we call the people, but we're just, just this group of folks. 
We want to run around here and act like nothing happened. They set the Negroes free after the Civil War or whatever, and we just as normal, we just normal as everybody else. You've been traumatized. We've been traumatized for hundreds of years. That just don't go away. And we're still being traumatized. Sean Bell, Freddie Gray, Sandra Blonde, Trayvon Martin, and the list goes on and on. Hell me, I suffered 10 years in a place I should not have never been. You think that was not traumatizing for me? Here I am as a soul brother. Every time I get pulled over by a cop, I gotta wonder, how is this gonna turn out? Because I'm still living in an environment of trauma, an environment of extreme violence, lies, deception. We're traumatized. How dare you? I would never go to nobody. I would never tell a woman who was raped or somebody that had been robbed by gunpoint or suffered, uh, 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 saw certain things in the war. My uncle was in the VR and didn't really want to talk about it. Suffered from trauma. Suffered from trauma. There's a lot of things that happen to people. They don't always tell you what happened to them. How many of us have been molested as children, raped as adults? Like I told you, there are men who have been raped by men. They're not going to tell you that. It's, humili it's, it's humiliating and it's traumatizing. They're not going to tell you about it. A lot of these guys on social media, I can almost guarantee you, the reason why they think and do the things they do is because of some kind of trauma. Tommy Sotomayor, prime example, he even talks about it. He tells you he was traumatized. And he attracts other folks been traumatized. That's why they think and the way they do. Because of trauma. So how do we heal? That's a good question. How do we heal? The only way we can really begin to heal is we have to change the environment because the environment feeds trauma. The environment that we live in it's not a healing environment. It's not a hospital. You can get shot and you can get shot again in this environment. You can get raped and you can get raped again in this environment. It's not a healing environment. They make movies and sing songs about trauma. So how the hell are you going to heal? You can't. That's why it's so necessary for something, for something like the Mississippi campaign so that we can create a safe haven, a place where we can feel safe so that we can deal with these issues, so that we can create an environment. You don't have to worry about suffering all this damn trauma. It's not going to be a perfect place because the people are still sick, but now you are putting folks in a place where now I got a chance, maybe I can try to heal. Where you will be in more so in an environment where people actually care about your life. Instead of, uh, so-and-so makes so-so, so-and-so makes such and such amount of money. I wonder how much that how much of that money I can get. I want to ride on that truck with uh, Brother Gary so he can treat me. How much money he going to spend on me? People just out to use you. Don't give a damn about you. Set, set you up to get robbed. Set you up to get traumatized. Set you up to get raped. It was a young girl right there in Atlanta. 
20 some year old. Her ex-boyfriend and a friend set her up to get to uh to get murdered. All of them in college. We're not living in an environment that causes healing. We're living in an environment that causes pain. And see, this is something that when I talk about the Mississippi campaign, we don't take a lot of these different things into consideration because you need to put yourself in a position to try to heal and not expose the babies to trauma. The only thing we can do as adults living today is try to control the hurt and the pain. But we can put our babies in a situation where they will experience less than what we had to experience because they will be protected. Our children are, are not protected here. You got sex trafficker, sex trafficking and and folks all over waiting to get a hold of your child. We got we have missing children and missing women countless in this nation. So it's up to us to stop it. It's up to it's, it's up to us to stop being so damn self-righteous and judgmental. Because you have not walked in my shoes. Maybe you wasn't bullied, you wasn't raped, or whatever. Folks that have never been traumatized, those are the main ones that's running their damn mouth. Oh, it's oh, it's easy. Just, just get over it. It's not that simple. I say this in my conclusion. I had a grand uncle. I think he lived to be close to 90. I think he was 91 or something like that. Now, as far as I knew about my uncle, he was the he was the, the the town drunk. That's what my uncle was. He was the town drunk, and he ate out of trash cans. He would not spend none of his money on food. He ate out of trash cans, and he got leftover food from restaurants. That's that's how he lived, and he drank his money away. He was the town drunk. And I was embarrassed, but he's still my uncle. I still, I still love my uncle. I still think about him, my uncle Bud. But that's all I knew about my uncle Bud. He was, a, he was the town drunk. Just recently, I found out what happened to my uncle. I found out that he lost his wife. He was a newlywed. He was in his late twenties or something like that. He was happily married and his wife passed from some type of illness and he never was the same again. See, losing somebody you love is traumatic and my uncle never was able to, to get over the loss of his wife and he turned to alcohol. Like some of you, you suffer trauma, y'all turn to alcohol and crack and weed, because we as a people, we love drugs. We love pornography. That's a way to get to, to deal with the pain. We smoke a lot of weed. That's a way to deal with the pain. We drink a lot. We are very spiritual. Another name for spirits is liquor. We are very spiritual. Take our, our spiritual ass down to the liquor store and get a lot of spirits. That's how we deal with the pain because we've been dealing with hundreds of years of trauma. And all our religion, and we use religion to try to get over the pain. Oh God, God. Oh Allah, God, Jesus, uh, Yahweh. These gods never answer. And the liquor ain't enough, so you just keep drinking. And you go blind watching put We're not in an environment of, of healing. 
We need a change, brothers and sisters. And I hear the RBG nation talk and black first and the comedic folks and the Hebrew Israelites. We'll make the change. We don't need a Mississippi campaign. Make the change. Give us what we need to heal us. They want to, but they can't have it. They don't have the wisdom. They don't know what to do. They have no idea. Screaming and hollering and thinking that you're smart is not going to get the job done. Not going to do it. You need something better. I didn't know what it, I did not know what it could be 10 years ago, five years ago. I know what we need now. It's the perfect solution. And it takes this into consideration. It's about healing. It's about healing us physically. It's about healing mentally. And if you want to say spiritually, so be that also. But I would suggest to you not, not out of the liquor bottle. <laughs> You need, we need this Mississippi campaign more than ever. You need a place that you can be to yourself. A place so that you can understand who you are. A place that you can heal. Arguing and debating and fighting and beefing. How the hell are you going to, you can't heal in this environment. White folks hate you. Black folks hate you. Asians hate you. How the hell are we going to heal in this? You can't heal in this type of environment. It's called trauma, my friend. It's called trauma. Look it up. Study. Since y'all so damn smart. Look it up. Study what trauma is. You just don't get over it. You learn how to live with it, but you don't get over it. It becomes part of your life. The reason why some of us are the way we are is because of trauma. So, so, uh, that's all I had to say on this one. I just wanted to get this, get it off my chest a little bit. I thank you so much for listening. And uh, the Oprah thing, I could be off. Let me know. Put it in the, put it in the, in the uh, comments. Like I said, I'm not a defender of Oprah. I could care less. I'm just wondering, <laughs> out of all the men in the world, why these folks, they, they got to choose these men with all this baggage attached to them. And it's not good either. Thank you, the legend. Thank you, my brother, Cool, Cool Cutter, for being there, being here. Thank you, for Twin. Thank you, if I missed anybody. Thank you, chat room. Thank you, uh, Troll. But you didn't even get nothing started good. I, I deleted you real quick. Thank you, Troll, for the view. Thank you for my Facebook. Thank you, everybody. And we're getting ready to go into a, a new year. And the, and the sad thing about it is, they're going to be doing the same damn thing they did this year and the year before and the year before. And so, and, and, and then they expect something to change. Nothing is going to change. And that's what's called insanity. When you do the same thing over and over again, expecting a different resolve, that's called insanity. And you know why you are insane? You are insane because... We suffer trauma. The trauma of over 300 years of abuse, exploitation, murder, rape, and so forth in this society. Passed down from generation to generation. And if God could heal, I would tell you that. I'd be on board. If, if RBG and if, if Black First and all these things that we love in the church, if all these things was healing us, I would tell you that. I, I would I have no problem with it. But it's not. It's not getting the job done. And we need to do something quick. 
Because if we don't do something quick, we might run out of time. It's your choice. It's our choice. And the way I look at it, I try to be positive, but I don't. I really don't see. I really don't see a, a happy ending to this story. I really don't. I would hope to be dead and gone. I don't want to see this. I don't see a happy ending for soul brothers and sisters in this country because you are not united. You on the bottom. If the right situation happened, you are gonna get it first. And you you're not in a position to protect yourself. You're not in a position to do nothing except take whatever anybody put on you. So on that note, let me get out of here. Thank you again for listening. Jot down your comments, subscribe, like, share, whatever you want to do. Yeah, y'all know how. I feel about all that on this platform. Until next time, if there is a next time, because the reality is tomorrow is not promised to none of us. So if it is, I'll be happy to see us and maybe we can have another uh, confab, another talk. I'm already 5,000, as Don Cornelius always said, as important. I wish us love, peace, and soul.